If you're an Uber Eats driver that occasionally does Walmart deliveries on Uber Eats, you're gonna wanna watch this video because you're getting screwed. Uber Eats gets the orders that Spark drivers won't take. I don't know how long it's been going on, but I've noticed it recently. I've probably seen, I don't know, 500 or more Uber Eats deliveries going to Walmart. And here's one thing I notice pretty much every time. The pay is always significantly less doing a Walmart delivery on Uber than it is as a Walmart Spark driver because I do both. And for me, at least in my area, I never see Walmart Spark under seven bucks ever. Um, and of course, most Walmart drivers won't take a, a $7 order. But I routinely see orders like this, $2. Three dollars, three batch orders for three dollars, four dollars. Okay, now I don't know the mechanism that they use to determine if Uber Eats driver is going to pick it up, but here's one thing I've observed: that when an order, because I'll, I multi-app, so I'll have Uber on, DoorDash, Walmart, Spark, uh, Instacart, I'll have all these things on. I'm actually going on the way to do a quick shop, so I leave these apps on. If this was gonna go up here, I would do this one, but it's not going the way my shop is going, so I'm not doing that. So I'll decline that. Uber wants me to do a shop going 16 miles for 26 bucks, nope. But here's what I've noticed on Walmart Spark. Just today, I saw an order for $12. It was going eight miles out east. And in this area, anything east, there's no other restaurants or stores, it's all houses. So any delivery you go out that way, you got to double the miles because you're coming all the way back empty. You're not going to get another order out there or anything like that. So I'm looking at this going, hey, that's like 16 miles. It was like seven and a half, 7.6, something like that. Um, DoorDash is trying. $7, 4.7 miles, but it's going south. Oh, Wendy's? Wendy's is on my no-fly zone. They take forever. Decline. That's an automatic decline. So anyway, I watch it because, you know, if nobody takes that order, it's going to go up and up and up. And I watch it get to 19. And I was in the middle of doing a DoorDash shop. And I just said to myself, you know what? If that gets to 20, I'll go ahead and take it. And my reasoning is there's a good chance I'll get a DoorDash or an Uber Eats going out there that way because there's a lot of DoorDash and Uber Eats going out there because there's no restaurants close and people don't want to drive. Um, and then a lot of drivers don't want to take them out there. So there's usually no shortage of food deliveries going out. Um, east of here so uh, next time I looked it looked like it was gone off spark it was 19 something I was waiting for one more dollar and I was like ah I lost it whatever not a big deal not even a minute later uber pings me right and the, I first glance at it it's going to the same location the the uber eats delivery and I went oh man I this is the order I was waiting for. It's going, it looks like the exact same spot. As I zoom in, I'm like, it's the exact same house. I'm like, and I'm, you know, in my head, I'm thinking, man, I just missed my window. I could have grabbed both of these. This Uber was paying $8. I mean, that would have been an extra eight bucks. I would have grabbed that one for $19.99, threw eight bucks on there. Now all of a sudden I'm making close to 30 for basically the same miles. And then I see, wait, this is a pickup, single pickup at Walmart going to the house. It's the order that sat there at $12 on Spark and went up to 19 and change. And then Spark finally went, screw it. Let's let an Uber Eats guy take it for $8. <laughs> it started on Spark for 12 and went to 19. And nobody took it. So no Spark driver wanted it for 19. So they're going to give it to Uber Eats. And that Uber Eats stayed there. I saw it come up twice at, at eight, never went up. And then that was it. I assume maybe somebody took it. But if you're driving Uber Eats, you're getting screwed. You're doing the same orders that Spark drivers do, and you're making half. So I don't know if Uber's pocketing the money or Walmart's pocketing the money. Somebody's pocketing the money, and it's not you. I highly recommend, as an Uber driver, you do not do Walmart deliveries as an Uber driver. Sign up for Spark. If you want to do Walmart deliveries, get on Spark. There's probably a waiting list, depending on where you're at, but... Get on the list. You know, I've done maybe two or three Walmart deliveries on Uber Eats. And they were both late at night and they were both really, really good. Like $30 good. 
but I've seen hundreds and hundreds of them that are three bucks, four bucks, six bucks. So if you're Uber Eats, sign up for Spark. Don't do Walmart deliveries on Uber Eats if you don't have to. It's, 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 you're getting ripped off. Somebody's pocketing that money. Ooh, $10 for six and a half miles. Darn it. I, I can't do it because my Walmart delivery is that, you know what? I actually probably could do it. I could do it. Cause you know, ah, but it's not, it's not helping me. If I go six and a half down, I gotta come six and a half back to, so I'm not, I'm just causing unnecessary stress. Even though that by itself is a good order, I would do that. But my Walmart delivery is over here. I'd have to go grab the pizza, come all the way back down here, then go back up here and then out to deliver Walmart. So I, I wouldn't be doubling up on my miles. What I want to get is a DoorDash going that way, right? So I can grab these two items in, in the shop in here, grab a $10, $15 DoorDash pizza or whatever, and do that. So I've got DoorDash on, I've got Uber Eats on, and hopefully when I run in here to do this shop, by the time I get that done and get back here, hopefully I'll have something I can pick up going that way um, because this is only paying 21 or 22 dollars to go seven miles that way which i only took it thinking there's a good chance i could get um another order so we'll see i mean it's a two item shop it's gonna take me three minutes plus i want a coke <laughs> okay worked out just like we drew it up i'll put it somewhere on the screen here while i was in there shopping um i got a mcdonald's order for i think 10 something going six miles i think what did i get maybe i'll put maybe i'll just show you make it easier for me make it easier in post 10 25 oh, 6.9 miles but the delivery is out where i'm taking these two two items that i just picked up at walmart so that's that's how you you know stack right i i declined about five other offers between Uber Eats and DoorDash before I found that one. And that's because half of them sucked. And I wouldn't take them regardless, but half of them were good offers. They just weren't going where I was going. The whole point of doing that is to try to, to, to be able to double up. I mean, I was literally in there two minutes. It was two items. Walmart is so fast, so easy in Walmart. So it's two items, $21, something like that to go 6.8 miles. But I got an outcome, you know, it's called seven. I got to come seven miles back. So it's 14. So you got, ah, it's $21 for 14 miles. That's better than a dollar a mile. You're making some profit, but it's not that great. But McDonald's is right here on the way. I'm not going out of my way at all. But you swing through and you grab a Mickey D's for 10 bucks. Now all of a sudden I'm getting $31. And I mean, the houses aren't right next to each other, but mo the bulk of the miles are going to be doubled up. So now... Instead of driving 14 miles for 21, I'm probably driving 16, maybe 17 miles for 31. Much better deal. Now I'm almost at two bucks a mile. Let's just hope the McDonald's is ready. Okay. Let's get it. This is how you make relatively decent money out here. I say relative because it's at the end of the day, it's still delivery. You're not going to go make a hundred bucks an hour or anything like that. But I consistently make 40 bucks an hour. Week in and week out, even in the summer right now when it's really slow in Phoenix, I haven't done any Lyft or Uber, like people delivery, people rides in two months. I mean, other than maybe one or two here or there, I don't even do it in the summer. It's just up, up in my area, it's super slow. Half the people leave, um, food delivery is even slow. Everything's slow in Phoenix in the summer. You know, big part of the population leaves. And nobody wants to go out because it's too freaking hot. It's 90 degrees in the middle of the night. Right, so, but this is how I can make 40 bucks an hour. I, I always roll four or five apps at the same time and I'm always kind of conniving and scheming and how do I do this and how can I do this? And if, you know, if I'm gonna go take this, I'm gonna have to get another order that's gonna do that. And the reality is, I know it's easier to do one app. It's really easy to have one app on and just sit there and wait for the app to tell you what to do. And that's fine and it's, it's easy and it's, it's relaxing. And I actually enjoy driving. I enjoy getting out of the house. But I got to tell you, the way I do it does cause some stress for me. It's always like, go, 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 go. You know, you're not getting paid by the hour. You're getting paid by the job. So you're always in a hurry, especially if you're dirty stacking or triple stacking, uh, which I do a lot. Sometimes I'll be on a Walmart delivery, have a DoorDash and an Uber Eats all at the same time. And all three apps are like, hey, you're going to be late. And I'm like, F you. I'll do what I want. I'm an independent contractor. 
You work for me, motherfucker. <laughs> so, uh, speaking of MFers, what does uh, Uber want me? $13 to go 11 miles. Uh, hell to the no. But guys, this is how you can actually make some decent money because if you just do one app, you can only do one delivery at a time. Sometimes they'll throw a little ad, add on, you know, oh, you know, for an extra $5, you can do this. In almost every case, they try to screw you with that, right? If you actually look at how much extra you're getting paid, they try to make it seem nice because you're already there. But then you realize all they did was they took an order that had no tip on it and tried to throw it on you because you were already at that store. Like, oh, for an extra $3, if you only go an extra one and a half miles, you could get an extra three bucks. And you might go, I'm already here, oh, an extra mile, oh, okay, three bucks. But you'd never take that order by itself. Like if you're sitting somewhere and it's a $3 order, you'd be like, F that, I ain't doing that. But when you multi-app and you cherry pick, right? I took this order that sat there. It started at $14. $14. Nobody wanted it. Because it was like eight miles out here and eight miles back, 16 miles. Nobody wants, smart driver doesn't want, and, and you gotta go shop. Now, granted, it's only two items. It got all the way up to 21 and change. Not awesome, but okay. But then you snap, but since you're multi-app, and if you were just doing Spark, you'd go get that order. Spark would not give you anything else. Wouldn't give you anything else. You'd have to go get that order for your $20 if you waited for it to get that high, 21 bucks. Drive eight and a half miles out here, drop it off. And then only on your way back, would you now start being able to get eligible for another order but you have to drive all the way back to Walmart again before you can even hope to get your next one. But if you're multi-apping, you grab a McDonald's for 10 bucks, go in the same place, the same direction, right? That's just an extra 10 bucks. How long was I in Walmart for? 30, or uh, uh, McDonald's for, 30 seconds? It was already ready, grabbed it. You know, it doesn't always work out that way, but now I'm getting $31 to go out these eight miles and then go back, right? You got a multi-app, it's the only way to do it. You know, don't start rolling like five apps at the same time, because that could get a little stressful. Start with two, and then once you get a little used to that, and always, you don't really want to start multi-apping at all until you're used to all of the apps that you're multi-apping with, because that, that'll add a level of stress and complexity. You don't want to be a brand new gig worker and then download five apps, and then I, I'm going for all of them. Learn them one at a time. Take the time to learn them, spend a week or so, delivering, get to know your area, figure out how DoorDash works, figure out how Uber Eats works, Uber, Lyft, Instacart, Spark, all that stuff. Drive them by themselves for a little bit. Get it all figured out, get comfortable with them. Six minutes with two extra miles on the car for 10 bucks. No brainer all day long. Oh shit. I'm talking to you guys and I, I totally missed my turn. I missed my delivery. <laughs> Oops. Plus extra time for filming and not watching my map because I'm filming. I didn't realize it was that close. The customer requested you leave the order at their door. Perfect. Additional instructions are provided in the Dasher app. Makes it easier to leave it at the door. All right, three, seven, make sure it's the right address. Always verify the address. Thankfully, I've not had that happen before. In two years, I've never dropped it at the wrong house. I always verify the address. Good to go. All right. Oh, look, Walmart's starting to yell at me. Now, when I say yell, they're saying, we suggest heading to the drop-off because the time's coming up. So, like, whatever. They can they can write me all the notes they want. <sighs> My response to all these apps that get annoyed, you know, in their notes about what I'm doing, it's like, hey, if you paid me uh, enough money to make it worth it, I, would, I wouldn't multi-app, I'd just drive for DoorDash when I come out or whatever. So that's the thing, that's why it's like, you can't fall for the scam of, oh, I gotta be a top dasher, I gotta be this, I gotta have my, my acceptance rate high. Th that's all a scam. That's all a scam designed to keep you a slave to the app. You are an independent contractor, you own your own business, you are an independent courier, okay? And all these apps are doing is providing leads. They have a need to get the food delivered. You have a need to have a customer because you're, as an independent courier, you don't have any customers. You know, you might start building your own clientele. There's people that do that. In fact, I recommend it. You know, use these apps to generate leads. 
and make money while you're generating leads. So most businesses, you gotta invest money to go generate customers. You gotta buy ads, you gotta, you gotta do something usually involves spending money to find customers, let customers know, you know, hey, I'm an independent courier. Hey, if you're hungry on Saturday night, I could bring you a pizza or whatever it is, right? You know, I've got a, a nice car, it's clean and I'll show up on time and whatever your thing is, whatever you're doing, you're making money by delivering people, delivering food, delivering things from point A to point B. That's what an independent courier does. All DoorDash, Uber, Lyft, Instacart, all these companies are doing is offering you leads. That's why you should never get mad at them. They're giving you something that you didn't have before, which are leads. They, they're the ones that spent the time and the money and the effort to get a customer. And they're letting you share the customer. They're saying, hey, we have a customer that you might be able to service. Would you like to service that customer? Here's how much we'll give you for that. And you say yes or you say no, it's that simple. And if, and if you don't think DoorDash is, or Uber is giving you a big enough piece of the pie for, for letting you service their customers, because let's not get this confused. They're not your customers. They're DoorDash's customers. They're Uber, Lyft, Instacart. These people signed up for their service, not for your service. Now you go sign up your own customers, you could charge more money. In fact, I'm sure you could charge more money so you'll make more and, it, and even though you're charging more, the customer will be able to pay less because you're cutting out the middleman. So go build up your own clientele. Don't bitch about, you know, it's like these companies are gonna give you leads and, and keep your family fed or whatever while you go out there and try to build your new business if that's what you want to do. And you got the balls to be pissed at them because you don't think they're paying you enough money because they, you think they owe you something? They get. Get it straight, Jack. They don't owe you shit. Because guess what? If Uber and DoorDash and Lyft and Instacart and Walmart Spark, if they didn't exist, you wouldn't be an independent courier right now. You'd be doing something else. I don't know what you'd be doing, but you wouldn't be driving a car bitching about how Uber's not paying you as much money as you think you're entitled to. So stop being an entitled victim. Get out there and earn. Make money. Make it so you're not dependent on these companies if that's what you want to do. You know, you can be a personal shopper. If that's what you want. If you're really good at shopping and you think there's a need there, it's like some customers have bad experiences with some shoppers. Especially all these people complaining about illegals delivering Walmart Spark and things like that. People are complaining that they don't even speak English and they're not picking out food very well and they're not very communicative on the chat with replacements because they don't speak the language. It's kind of difficult. Hmm, I don't know, opportunity there. You deliver to somebody, hand them your card. Be very chatty in the chat. I wouldn't be selling your service, your personal services in the door to uh, the Instacart chat. But you could get a card made up, put it with the bags. Be very communicative, communicative in the chat with the customer. Go above and beyond extra. Give me an example. Now, I'm not currently building a clientele for anything. Uh, although I do do private rides, I will do that. I like doing private rides. That, that pays better than anything else. But I was doing a, a, a Spark order for a lady yesterday, it was six items. One of the items was ice. For whatever reason, Walmart was completely out of ice. You know, and she got some Smirnoff um, and some uh, tonic water. So, I, you know, I know why she wanted the ice. She wanted to have some nice drinks tonight. So I texted her and said, hey, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. They were out of ice. Don't worry. I'll go to the gas station and get you a bag of ice. I was getting $20. She was paying $20 for this five item shop. And she was like three miles up the road. Okay. Now I went over to the gas station. I bought her a bag of ice, $3 and 50 cents. I got there. I, I, she texted me back. She goes, Oh no, don't worry. You don't have to do that. I'm fine. I still have a little bit. And I was like, you know what? I'm already here. No big deal. I want to make sure you have plenty of ice. Not a big deal. And it's not, wasn't a big deal. Well, 
When I dropped it off, guess what she did? She gave me a $10 cash tip, right? So I ended up getting $30 for that, minus the $350 I spent on ice, made $26.50. For that five item shop, shot over the gas station, literally right across the street, and delivered at three months. But if, you know, if I was wanting to build a personal shopper business, my opportunity costs are too high to be doing that, but here's an idea for somebody. If you're good at shopping, I can guarantee you this. If I would have handed her a card and it's like, oh yeah, hey Nancy, yeah, I'm happy to help, blah, 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 blah. Hey, you know what? Next time I actually do a personal shopping for people. You know, if you want, I can just be your personal shopper. Just send me, here's my card. Send me a text whenever you need something and I can get it for you. I guarantee you she would have been like, cool, I'll do that, right? Because how many, how many spark drivers would have went to the grocery, would have went over across to the gas station and bought her a bag of ice with no guarantee that you're gonna get paid for it, right? I guarantee you she would call me every time she needed something purchased. She would just send me a text, hey, here's my list. But, and that's just one example. I talk to customers all the time. I guarantee you I could convert a lot of them to personal shoppers, you know, personal food getters, you know, and you could do something, especially in my area up here, it's four bucks a mile from, from the restaurant to your house. So if you live six miles away, it's 24 bucks, you know, with a $15 minimum or whatever, in case they want something a half a mile away, right? That's it, that's all you gotta do. And 24 bucks for that is probably less than they're paying DoorDash. And they know their driver. They know who they're gonna do. Oh, Damon's gonna grab our food. We don't have to worry about him spitting in it or whatever, right? You could build your own clientele pretty damn quick. Why you're getting paid, why Uber and DoorDash are paying you to do it. You could be out there building your business. But instead you're wasting time bitching about Uber and DoorDash not paying you enough money. You're not a victim. Go start a business. Go start a business. <laughs> now? All right, done with that. Did the Walmart, did the McDonald's. And talk about multi-apping, not only did I deliver a McDonald's and a Walmart and got paid like $31, $32 for that, I shot a video. I'm just damn efficient with my time these days. I got paid $31 to deliver a burger, some eggs, and do a little YouTube video. And here's the thing, the problem with this gig stuff, you get paid for what you do. That's it. You did it, you got paid, you're done. There's no residual. What I, what I really wanna do is build this YouTube channel. I really enjoy helping people out, teaching them things. I don't know everything, but I know there's a lot of people that could use this kind of advice. And I know it's, in my opinion, there's been no time in history that's been as easy for anybody and any skill set just to go out there and make money if they want to make money. I mean, I wish they had this kind of stuff when I was a kid. Oh man, it would have been over. Like I've always been a hustler my whole life. I've always been not a hustler in a bad way. Like, you know, how can I make some money? I want to start a business. I want to do this. I want to do that. I mean, I sold gum in junior high out of my locker, bought it at Price Club. Yeah. <laughs> That's how long ago I was in school. Back before it was Costco for you youngins, I, I'd go to Price Club and I'd buy all this gum. And, you, you know, of course you get that. That's basically the wholesale, right? And then I would take it and I would sell it for like a dollar a pack. I wish they would have had this kind of stuff when I was in high school. When I was in high school, I worked at my dad's steel shop, cleaning steel on the weekends, cleaning the offices, wiping down steel, and then as I graduated high school, went into college, I was a project manager, but I also in high school delivered bouncy houses. We called them Astro Jumps. The guy that owned it was our science teacher and our football coach. But usually it was a weekend job. And we'd go and we'd deliver those, set them up. Kids would jump in them for four to eight hours or whatever. We'd go back, 
roll them back up, put them in the back of our trucks, drive home. I mean, we thought we were rolling fat, man. We used to have, you know, we used to get paid $20 a jump. And on a good weekend, we'd get four jumps, fit them in the back of the truck, go make four deliveries. And those deliveries were all over the place. I mean, we even had some that were, um, there was uh, a couple that were over a hundred miles away sometimes, but most of them were fairly local, but they could easily been 30, 40 miles away. But we would get 20 bucks a jump. That's you know, 10 bucks for dropping it off, 10 bucks for picking it up. I know you have to be 18 to do this stuff, but this is perfect for an 18 year old. Senior in high school, freshman in college, DoorDash, Uber Eats. It's the easiest way. If you just need to make two grand a month to cover going out, you know, maybe pay for some clothes. I mean, really think about it. As a, as a, as a high school student or a college student, what kind of a job are you gonna get that gives you that flexibility to still go to school? You have absolutely no schedule. Your friends wanna go ski in the mountains for the weekend, you can go. You know, oh, I gotta report to my job. I work at In-N-Out, I make 18 bucks an hour, or whatever it is. Not that In-N-Out's a bad job, but you're told where, where to show up, where to show up. I could teach an 18 year old kid living in Phoenix, because every, every area is different, so it's relative. You know, you, I, you, I couldn't say, take somebody in, in, in the Midwest in a small little town and show them how to make 30 bucks an hour. The demand's just not gonna be there. You gotta be in a place where the demand is there. But more importantly, have, it, have complete flexibility. I mean, it's crazy how nice this is. So Spark doesn't look like they had anything else. Nothing popped up. It's real slow. I think I'm just gonna go home. I mean, I'm just driving home right now. If I don't get anything pop on DoorDash or Spark or Instacart, or Uber Eats. Oh, I'm not even on uh, DoorDash right now. It got popped off. Um, yeah. And there's nothing to schedule. What about what's been slow the last two days? Been Instacart, man. Instacart's had nothing. Here's a $15 Sprouts order, 46 items for $15. 26 items for $18, also at Sprouts, going 14 miles. Hail to the no. That's that's uh, Instacart. Spark's got nothing. Yeah, I'm just gonna head home. Head home. What what they'll do is they'll throw me an offer right when I pull into my driveway. That's what they always do.